It is just another sign of the critical shortage of affordable housing in San Francisco. A new development offering 95 affordable apartments received almost 6,600 applications. Prospective residents have to earn less than the median for San Francisco, and they were all picked through a lottery system. Talk about a staggering turnout. Joining me now is Todd David, executive director with the San Francisco's Housing Action Coalition. We all know there is great demand, but when you think about those numbers, 6,500 people for 95 units, your reaction to that? It's, it's shocking, right? It's, it's really yeah. sad. And I think one of the things that's you know most shocking or vexing is it's really a, um, a self-inflicted problem. It's one that we have created by underproducing housing at all levels of affordability for 30 years in, in San Francisco and the Bay Area. I spoke with, uh, this is a Mercy Housing Project, and I spoke with the property manager at this particular complex. It's called the Natalie Gubb Commons. And he said, yes, we expected a lot of applications, but he told me that the application window was only three weeks long, and you had 6,500 people meet that deadline. I, again, that's just telling. Yeah, I, you know, people, so the people who who um, can apply to this housing make 60% of the AMI mm -hmm. area median income. So that's about for a family of four. That's about sixty thousand dollars. And if you think about it, San Francisco in the Bay Area, it's it's really sad that a family making sixty thousand dollars a year has no chance of getting any type of market rate housing. And you know, once again, this really you know th the micro problem. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty, there's a lot of like micro problems. But really, from a macro point of view. The problem is truly a supply and demand mm -hmm. problem, and that if we were building more housing, if it was able to pencil more housing, was afford to be built, was able to be built, people making 60% of AMI would be able to get regular housing in the market. And so, you know, like I said, one of my first, my first comment, this is really a problem that we in the Bay Area created. Y yeah, but, but how do you get more affordable housing built? I mean, I know that a lot of cities are trying to remove some of the hurdles, but it is quite a task for any developer. No, absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. So, so let's start with this. No one city is going to be able to solve this by itself, right? So in San Francisco, we actually do a pretty good job of building affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I would argue that we build more affordable housing per capita than any other um, municipality in the state of California. So really what we need is we need, the re we need a regional solution, right? The Brisbane's of the world, when they say no to 4,400 units of housing near Caltrain, that's a problem, right? When our wealthy suburbs say we don't want to build affordable housing near BART stations, that's a problem and that contributes to it. So the only way we're ever going to get out of this hole is really every region, every municipality has to do its part to build housing. The other thing is that I also think it's really important to define affordable housing because that term is really confusing mm -hmm. to a lot of people. So when we're talking about affordable housing, we're talking about subsidized affordable housing where if people are making, like I said, 60% of AMI or lower, that is different than housing affordability, right? Housing affordability is what anyone can afford to live in. So we're specifically talking right now about subsidized affordable housing. But let's be clear, teachers make too much money to qualify right. for subsidized affordable housing. So we also have a big middle income housing problem mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. And there are a too. lot of segments that don't qualify when you when you look at some of the requirements. Talk to me though about the lottery system and how that has changed because my understanding is that you know you used to sort of be you would spin the barrel and you know draw names. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. No longer drawing the names out of a box, but everything has sort of moved online. Does it help or hurt the process, do you think? You know, I'm not sure that it, it either helps or hurts the mm. process. I think it's kind of uh, the same type of idea. You know, what's, what's frustrating for many people is that they could be on, in the, on the waiting list yeah. and participating in the lottery for 10 years, wow. right? You don't get any advantage having been waiting for 10 years. And so it truly is a lottery. Mm. You know, I'm not sure that I could say there's a better, a, a better, a better system. system. It's, it's one system. I mean, you know, once again, making sure that we can build more affordable housing mm -hmm. in more areas, I think is the best way to try to address this issue. Yeah, trying to figure out the best way to give everyone a fair chance at what is available. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming in, Todd, to talk with us about